Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. I recently got a chance to put some Ryoji rasps to good use on my recent project, the No Comment Number 2 build, which ended up building a Demi Loon table. Now, the Demi Loon itself consisted of you know, five legs in the front going in a, in a radial pattern, and this is one of the legs that I shaped using just the rasps. I had sort of a picture in my mind of what I wanted it to look like, but it wasn't too terribly, it wasn't specific. So it was good actually kind of experimenting with the rasps, being able to take off certain material and go, I want that thinner, I want that to be more, you know, more of a, a taper, a strong taper, I want this knuckle to be rounded, things like that. So it was great to do some experimenting with the rasps. Now, of course, once you get to this point here, me being kind of more hybrid as opposed to only hand tools, I use this model to be able to do some uh, faster shaping on the other four legs by running it through a bandsaw and then using a grinder to take off some of the, the big bulk before finessing with the six through the 15 grain rasps. Now when I talk about the rasp with the different grain numbers, in a way this is a different coarseness or roughness, how fast it's gonna remove the stock. Now the numbers for woodworking are generally gonna go from six up through 15, like I've got down here, that 15 being the finest one. Now when talking about the grain of a rasp, it has to do with the lower numbers are gonna be the coarser grain, so it's gonna be what you're gonna use when you're doing the initial shaping. You're gonna have fewer teeth, but the teeth are gonna be a lot taller and more pronounced, so they're gonna, they're gonna actually have a lot more bite. These look like little triangles that have been pulled up and lifted out of the wood. So each one of these teeth is gonna grab a pretty significant amount of wood when you're talking about a six grain rasp. When you're up and looking at like the 15 grain, or in this case here a 14 grain rasp, there are significantly more teeth per unit area versus the six, but also the teeth are very, very low to the rasp body itself. So it's not gonna be able to pull nearly as much material off at a time. So it obviously shows a progression that you would use very similar to say sandpaper. You're gonna start at a lower grit and you're gonna work your way up into the finer grits as you get near the end of the project. To me, it's not a finish ready surface after like the 14 or even the 15. Now maybe if I spent more time with it and maybe if it wasn't soft maple in the case of this project, maybe that would be different. But to me, it's, uh, it still requires a little bit more work afterwards. Now the way these rasps work is that uh, these are hand stitched rasps, so it's not a machine that's bolting out a pattern. They've been stitched randomly. So when you, when you have a random cut like that, when one of the triangles lifts some piece of the wood, there isn't a triangle right after it in the trough. Because the other triangles behind it that have been hand stitched are kind of offset from each other, basically what one leaves behind, the other one is gonna be picking up. So it seems like they're a lot more efficient when you're doing the cutting. Now the way that you use a rasp is pretty simple. I mean, it's not gonna be straight up and down in this case here. You're gonna actually be progressing it and pushing it. So like this one here with it being number six and this leg already being partially shaped, I'm not gonna wanna go too crazy with it. But you're gonna wanna be, in a way you're kinda pushing it down on a diagonal for doing the cuts. Now let me switch to an 11 so I'm not changing the shape of my leg too, too much here. But when you're pushing it down at the diagonal, if you look at the stitching, the stitches aren't this direction here. They're actually gonna be at an angle on the underside here. They're at this angle here. So that as I'm pushing it down, the teeth are actually engaging head on into the wood. If I simply took this and went straight up and down, the way that the stitching is on an angle, what you're gonna see is you're actually gonna get more of a scratch than you are gonna get material removed. Now that said, with the teeth going this direction here, now if I, if I go to use this as a proper rasp in the left hand, the problem is that you're gonna notice that the teeth are gonna be going exactly sideways, leaving only a scratch. So that said, rasps come in a left hand and a right hand variety. Now mine are all right handed. So for proper use of this rasp, I'm gonna be pushing it down like this as a right handed user. If I switch to this side here and I do the same thing, I'm not really pulling hardly any material off at all and in fact I'm getting a really ugly scratch here. So with that in mind, you're always gonna to have to use it in a right handed position, which can be really kind of awkward when you're on this side here. It means you kinda of gotta go up. Now personally, I don't have much of a problem with doing that. In fact, if you see some of the action shots on no comment, I simply get down a little bit lower and I can do it from the other direction to save myself some time in flipping the product around that I'm working on. But that's me. So in that sense, with the right handed, you can go up here or you can go down onto the opposite side, which is the more natural way of using it. So I'm kind of going over how to use a rasp and such so that you can have a better idea of what to expect when you're taking a look for these things. Now rasps come in a number of different shapes, all for doing different things. Now, this number six and the number nine that I have 
both of these are the cabinet maker rasp shape. So it's a bit, uh, it's a very shallow radius that we have here. And then the other side is flat. So what it'll work well on is if you're doing kind of a gentle curve that you're going to be able to finesse that a little bit. Of course, because there's a taper on here, I was able to use the tip of the number six in order to do some of the shaping in there. Now, some of the other shapes, then you start to get to the half rounds where it's a little bit more narrow. And then you'll ultimately get down to some of the modeler's rasps. This one here is one of the modeler rasps. And this one here being a 15 grain is used much more for doing some of the fine tuning of the inside curves. Now for doing some of the rough work of the inside curves, then you get more to the, you know, the shapes that we're more familiar with, like the rat tail rasp. Now when you talk about rat tail, there is no left-handed or right-handed. This thing, just you just poke it and push and away you go. So with it being tapered, you can use it for enlarging a hole. Or in my case, I use this quite a bit for doing the junction between the two pieces of stock that form this leg. Now this one here is one of the specialty rasps that he had, and I wanted to give this one a try because it, it seemed like it would work very well for me. And what this is, is it's shaped like a push rasp. This rasp actually has the teeth perpendicular to the rasp face. So what's nice about this being nice and long with the two handles is that you can do a little bit more shaping this way here. Like in this case here, I was using it in the pull. This way here, I can use it in the push. And I find that that's really nice when you're trying to fare a long curve. Now these other ones work very well for that as well, but I found that this was kind of, I don't know, in certain ways it was a little bit more fun to use. <laughs> now here's another modeler's rasp that I picked up. It's a number 15, whereas this one here is a number 14. So this one here is the half round rasp. And this one here is the modeler's rasp. They're almost the same grain, but you can see that one is almost twice as wide. So this one here just helps you get into some smaller areas. In my case, I also picked up some of the rifflers for getting into some of the smaller areas. Now, these are two different profiles of, I believe there's 12 total profiles for different rifflers. These are the ones that seem to me to be the most useful for the types of things that I like to do. So these generally are of a finer grain. These ones here happen to be 13s instead of like the 15s. I didn't want it to be so slow, but at the same time, I didn't want it to be really chewing up the wood. So these work really well. They don't have safety edges on these, so you are able to use the back of these to be able to do some small cutting and such. In the case of this knife profile here, I would be able to use this maybe to help square up something if I needed to on the inside. And actually, speaking of squaring up, he does have some flat rasps. So you could picture this with just one handle. And there's two surfaces, of course. Uh, because the two surfaces, you know, whether you use it this way or you use it this way is totally how you pick it up. You can actually get it optional to have two different stitching, one on each side. So that can be very useful. And in the case of doing that, you're going to be picking up something that you could more easily cut or expose a hole and then square up a wall. Now one of the nice things with these tools is that they all come in these nice little carrying cases so you can store the rasp inside there and close them up. Now in my case it's really good because I don't really have a good drawer for putting these into. Now this mini rasp is one of the ones that uh, Noel Logier has created you know, it was kind of on request of some people I guess and he thought hey not a bad idea so he decided to create this. Now this one here is an eight grain so the grain being kind of a little bit rougher. But what would be nice with this is on a piece of stock like this leg here that I'm shaping, try to lift that up a little bit more so I can get at it. You know, if there was a curve in here that was a little bit harder to get at, this is a little bit easier to get at. Now, admittedly with an eight grain, it's a little harder to control. So you probably have to be more used to this, but you know, using two hands, you can get a little bit of motion on it to sort of fare off some material and then follow it up with say some of the finer rifflers or maybe even a, a finer soge rasp here. Now Noel Logier offers a couple different lines for his rasps. Mine are all the traditional ones. Like he says, these are good, especially like for me as a hobbyist, I don't use these all the time, that this is easily gonna be a lifetime tool anyway. Now, if I did this professionally where I did a lot of shaped legs, you know, maybe a couple legs a week or whatever, it might be that I would actually wanna to prefer to move up to the sapphire line. The sapphire line is a considerably harder and stronger rasp body so it'll it'll endure more before it ever gets dulled you might actually if you're doing this a lot you might actually consider getting a number of these rasps in the finer grains just in traditional but maybe get the number six in a sapphire line something where you're going to be really roughing it out now one of the other things that noel logier has is a line for doing stone sculpture now obviously i didn't do this this is an inuit sculpture that i got it's made out of a green soapstone so it's a, it's a really nice piece. They do have rasps that are actually specialty made for doing stonework. Now while the rasp for stonework 
have similar grain numbers and such. Some of the rasps actually, though the names are the same as the, the woodworking rasps, uh, they do have a little bit of a different form for the stitching that's on it. So you would want to specify whether or not you're using it for stone or for wood. That's especially the case when you're dealing with the rifflers. So let me do a little bit of shaping on this leg and then you'll be able to see some of it in action. We can talk about it. Now, I'm about done with the number six before I thought of rolling this video. So now if we're using this number nine, this is still a pretty fast, aggressive cut, but it's not nearly as rough. So. Okay, when I pull this out for demo, <laughs> I should retighten it up. Now actually what you're, what you're hearing here is though a rasp doesn't seem like it would have a direction similar to sandpaper, sandpaper really doesn't have a, a direction when you're cutting grain, it isn't the case with a rasp. A rasp is trying to lift the grain. But what you're hearing here when it's doing that sort of this dance here, <laughs> that's me going against the grain and it's actually making a pretty rough looking cut here. Now for this I don't really care because all I want to do is remove material. But when you're getting down to the finer grains, like now if I were to switch over to the 11, <laughs> It is cleaning it up a little bit, but it still looks fairly rough because I'm going against that grain. So let me switch over to the 14. So one of the interesting things about the 14 is I was able to clean up that mess that was left behind even though I was going against the grain. The reason I'm going against the grain here is because the leg is tapering up, so I have a lot of exposed end grain on the side of this leg. But with the 15, the teeth on here are so fine that in a way, it's like you're taking a plane that has, you know, in the case of these teeth, it's a really high raking angle. And it's as if you have a really small mouth because of the way that the chips will break off so quickly. So because of that, you're actually able to go against the grain and produce a clean leg. Now I did want to compare rasps in a way to some of the other tools that I've been using in the past for doing some shaping. In previous projects that I've done where there was some shaping, I used a lot of these plain files. Now these files here, they happen to have a really nice tooth pattern where it actually acts much more like a plane. So although the teeth are raised just like they would be on a mill file, they happen to be raised higher and the cut that's on them is actually kind of a ground cut. So it's shaped and it makes a very clean cut. So these ones here will actually somewhat clean the wood. The thing is, while these do produce a nice surface, getting this shape using these files will take you quite a long time. So I do actually like to follow up some of the rasp work with these files sometimes if I'm not going to be going straight to a sander. But these all also work really well and they are a great follow up to the rasp work of getting through quickly. So I think this leg came out pretty good and uh, given my skill levels with shaping, if I can do this, anybody can do this. So uh, I think if you've had rasps in the past and I know I've tried a few other ones and I kind of gave up on them before I got these. Uh, in fact, I was really reluctant to buy these thinking that, well, all the other rasps I tried I didn't like. But these ones here I've really, really enjoyed. So I think there's, uh, there's definitely a chance that if you've tried rasps and you didn't like it, you might end up liking these. So find somebody else who's gotten them, maybe give them a try or maybe get some buddies together and get a small set to tinker with. I think you'll enjoy them.